Hi again, let's continue talking about uh, the JavaScript and the shopping cart example. And let's do a couple things here. So, uh, you know, I like what I have here. Um, you know, it's displaying my cart and I have a couple problems to solve, right? So, right now, um, you know, if I want the cart to display, um, to display, you know, the, 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 the list of shopping cart items when, um, when we load the page, we'll need to call on this display cart function. And um, right now, I have it written down here at the bottom of the page, right? And, you know, I wrote it here because JavaScript will execute all the lines of code in order. So, you know, when you um, load your script tag, let me find the script tag here. Oh, here it is at the top, right? And then JavaScript reads each line one at a time. And when it sees a function, it defines that function, but it doesn't really, you know, execute any code, right? So the function is sort of a block of code that we're going to call on later, right? So here it, you know, it defines this function here, right? You know, with jQuery. And then we define our display cart function. And then, you know, we define, you know, the cart and some other items, right? And then at the bottom of the page, we call on load cart. And what's important here is that if we try to call on display cart before the cart is loaded, then essentially, you know, we'll display an empty cart because we've loaded JavaScript. You know, the cart array is empty and uh, there's nothing in it. So when we call display cart here, you know, we display a cart with zero items. And then if we call load cart, then we actually get the cart that we saved to local storage. And that one has stuff in it. So, so it's important that we, um, you know, if we're going to call this display cart, we call it after we load the cart. Okay. Let me get rid of these comments here, right? Um, and then I, I put a couple... Um, comments in the display cart function here um, just to show me when that happens, right? So let me go find display cart. Oh, here we are, right? So you can see here, you know, if we if we say display cart, you know, then we'll 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 know when this function is called, and then when we we have you know cart array here, we'll get it from list cart, and then we'll you know count the array to see how many items are in it, right? You know, so if I I test this with the console here, you know, you can see um, it says display cart seven items, right? And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, let's do a couple other things here. So let's talk about this, uh, this HTML option here. So this allows us to write text into a tag. So right now, when we call HTML on the show cart element, we're going to replace everything that's here inside, you know, between the opening and the closing tag with text that we want to write. So, um, you know, for example, if I put a, you know, a tag in here with a bunch of question marks, right? And then I refresh this, you can see I don't see the tag with the question marks, right? Okay, let's do another quick test here. If I take out this display card at the bottom here, and then, you know, so I'll just put two slashes there to disable this. And then if I, you know, refresh here, you can see now I see the question marks, right? But as soon as I click on one of these links, it's going to load the cart and then replace the, the inner HTML with, you know, some new HTML, right? So that's the, I'm going to take the comments out there and we'll go take a look up here. So you can see, so that's the job of HTML. When you call on, you know, jQuery, you're selecting an element, you know, jQuery with some selector. And then when we say HTML, you know, we're going to replace the inner HTML of this element with the text that you are writing here. Let's do another example with that. So I've added a tag here, and you can add one of these, right, where it's going to be a div with an ID, total cart, and then we're going to print the total for the cart here. Okay? 
with a dollar sign maybe, right? So we're going to put that here. So now, you know, right now at this point, we'll see, you know, this text on the page, you know, at the bottom here. There it is, total cart with a dollar sign. And now maybe I want to write the, the total of the cart into here. So how could I do that? Well, let's, let's just do it here first, right? So maybe I want to select this element, total cart, and since it's an ID, I'll put the hash mark here. And we'll put total cart, and then I'll say .html. And then maybe my cart is worth, you know, $99.75, right? So I'll, I'll I'll put 99.75, and I, and I want it to appear right here, but what's going to happen is it's going to replace that other text with the 99.75. So, you know, if I want to have some text inside this tag, you know, this is always going to replace it. So maybe, you know, if you have a situation like this where you want to have some text in here and then also add some other text to it, the easy way is to include a span maybe. And then we can move this um, ID name over here into the span. And then now, you know, we'll be writing the text in here, and then this other text will be left alone. Let's give it a try. So I'll save that. We'll refresh it here. And then it's total cart 99.75. So that works pretty good. So now let's, let's solve some other problems, right? So this is working OK. Why don't we, you know, take that out and then maybe down here in the display cart section, maybe I'll get rid of these comments for now. And maybe in here, after we get the, the cart displayed inside the list, maybe we'll say, hey, you know, cart total is whatever, and we'll put the total here. Now, we have a function that we wrote earlier called, you know, um, total cart and it totals up the cart you know the value of the cart so I'm gonna type in here and I'm gonna type in um, total cart Oops, like this right so you know I want to call on that total cart function so I say the name and then I follow it with the parentheses okay so that gets the function and that's gonna return it's gonna call on the function and the function will return the, the total value for the cart and uh, and then we will print it into the HTML so let's save that and then there we go now I noticed something here earlier I made a mistake on this right so we're gonna go fix that right so it's adding up the cart but that doesn't quite look like the right cost and when I add new items you can see you know I'm getting new items here you know like the number of apples and frisbees is going up but the total isn't changing so let's go take a look at the cart total our function has an error in it right so we'll scroll down here and we'll look at you know total cart you yeah, know there it is right and you know here we're we're gonna call total cart we're gonna get the cart total we're gonna loop through every item in the cart, right? And our problem is we're getting the price of each item. And if there was one item, you know, in the cart for each item that we had in the cart, there was only one of each, this would be correct. But if we have multiple items, we need to multiply the price times the count of items. So let's fix that. Let's use the star to multiply. And then we'll say cart bracket I dot count so remember our cart has a the items in the cart have a price and a count and this is how many items there are and this is how much each item costs so if we multiply times the price then we'll you know we'll get the total for for that number of items right so that'll fix that problem and uh, we'll save it and we'll refresh it here Oh, now that looks pretty good. This number here doesn't look good, and I'm going to talk about that. We're going to dedicate a video to JavaScript and numbers because that's a, this is like a very common thing that happens, right? Um, so, uh, sorry about that. I hit save by mistake, right? Um, so anyway, so that's working now. That looks like a better price, and if I add another Frisbee, you can see the price goes up, right? 
add some shoes, right? Okay, so, so that's working pretty good. I have a little problem here because I notice when I also when I save these and I refresh, you know, like let's look at apples right here. There's seven. And when I add like 10, 11, 12, 13, 16, right? And then I refresh, it goes back to seven. So let's solve that one too. So we got some problem where we save items. And essentially, you know, we've got this function here called, you know, save cart. And so anytime we change the contents of the cart, we save it to local storage. So, you know, here we are, we've got, you know, add item to cart. Now, let's, let's talk about how JavaScript executes code in a function, okay? So what happens is, you know, the function begins here, and you call on it, and you pass it some parameters, maybe, right? You don't have to, but a lot of functions can take parameters. And then, you know, JavaScript's going to execute each line of code in the function until it gets to the bottom, usually, okay? And it's going to do the lines in order. The thing is, when the one exception there is when we call on return. So when the return line is executed, that ends the function here. So in our case, you know, when we add an item to the cart, here we're going to loop through each item in the cart one at a time. And if that item already exists in the cart, right, because we find its name in there, then we're just going to up the count. And if we do this, we don't save the cart because return ends the function here and we don't get to the bottom, okay? So I used return there. We could change this to break, and then that'll just break the loop, and we'll go, we'll skip down to the bottom here, right? And then that'll make sure that we um, that we um, well, actually, you know, maybe we got a problem because then it might add a new item. Hmm, that's probably why I used return there. Let's not use return here, right? Because you know, if we return, then we're we're gonna skip adding this new item to the cart, right? So maybe we need to do this. Maybe we just need to make sure that before we return, we're going to call save cart. Okay, so if we up the count of items in the cart here, then we're going to save the cart, and then we're going to return and end the function right here. And if we don't find the items in the cart, if we loop through everybody here and we never find one that matches this name, then that's a new item, and we'll add it to the cart here by creating a new item and pushing it into the cart array. Okay? Let's give that a test. So we'll go to our page now and uh, refresh it here. And uh, here, let's refresh it again, right? And then maybe we'll add a couple apples there. So now we got 14, right? And then we'll refresh. Oh, now we still have 14. Let's add a plush toy. Well, I guess I don't have plush toy on the list here. I guess I must have added that one manually and I didn't make a link for it here, but I guess I can add some more Frisbees. Everybody needs a lot of Frisbees, right? Um, so we'll save that. Oh yeah, so that seems to be working well. Now it's saving the, the number of items there, even when they, when they already exist, right? So anyway, that's probably enough for this video. I hope you guys got something out of that. Um, I want to talk more about numbers and how we're displaying this list and how we write the code in there that's going to create HTML inside these elements. So we'll come back and we'll revisit this because I kind of, you know, didn't really talk about that. I just kind of wrote it in the previous video when we first put that in there, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that's interesting for you people, and uh, see you later.